Good morning. I am Dr. Francesco Costa. I am the head of the Spanish Oncology sec uh, Surgical Section of the Humanita Clinical and Research Center in Milan, Italy. First of all, I want to thank you, the President of the Congress and the Scientific Committee to invite me to share my experience with you about the spinal metastasis. It's a very difficult topic because there is a lot of shadow in this uh, argument, and, but analyzing literature and experience, we can find some light in the argument. It's a very important topic because uh, we know that more than 70% of the patients with the neoplastic disease develop spinal metastasis in their life. And uh, regarding the bone metastasis, the spinal are the more frequent lesion, uh, the more frequent location of the metastasis. Due to the hematogenous spread and sometimes from the direct invasion from the site of the um, neoplastic lesion. The site of the spinal metastasis usually are the bone and the pedicle structure while only in the 5% the metastatic lesion can be intradural and are very rare the intermedullary uh, location of the metastasis. So when we speak about spinal metastasis, we are speaking about pathology of the column structure, the bone, vertebral body, pedicle, disc, ligament, and also the muscles. The architecture of the vertebral body are is uh, normally disrupted with the uh, osteolytic lesion, and but sometimes we can find also osteoblastic, osteoblastic alteration, and uh, this combination may disrupt the biomechanical property of the spinal column. Regarding the diagnosis, uh, usually um, the patient discovered the spinal metastasis during the staging or the follow-up of the primary lesion. But sometimes in 10, up to 20% of the cases, uh, is represent the first presentation of the disease and represents an emergency because usually there is a fracture um, with a, a neurological impairment. And this needs to treat the patient, to analyze the patient in the emergency department. But also in this case, we have to keep in mind that the neurosurgical or the orthopedic problem is also a secondary problem of, the, of another lesion, of, of another disease. So it's very important to keep in mind the whole picture of the patient. Also because the life expectancy is not only correlated to the location on the site of the metastasis, but it depends from the histology, the stage of the pathologies, and also of the comorbidity and the treatment of the spinal metastasis. Also, if play a very important role, is not the main treatment that the patient needs. So we have to keep in mind that the, this kind of patient needs medical therapy, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and sometimes they require surgery, both from the spinal metastasis, but sometimes also from the primary lesion. So a multidisciplinary evaluation for those patients is very important. And the definition of a multidisciplinary team with a regular meeting is, in my opinion, very important because we have to discuss the patient, to discuss the cases, share our exper expertise, our experience, and analyze the different point of view of uh, the surgeon, of the um, neuros uh, neurosurgeon, the oncologist, the radiotherapist. And in my opinion, it's very important also to have a task force also uh, available 24 hours for a day also to manage this information also in emergency. And it's well known that the, the multidisciplinary management of the spinal metastasis provides better results for the patient. Also because the oncologists, the radiotherapists usually want to know if the patient must be operated on. But before to decide if a spinal metastasis can be operated or must be operated, we have to try to understand what kind of patients we have. So we need some adjunctive 
information about the condition of the pathology. So a scoring system is really important. In literature, we can find very different kinds of scoring, analyzing different aspects of the pathology. Probably the most used, the most famous are the Tokuashi score and the Tomita score, that are the two that I want to point my attention. The Tokuashi score is a five grade, uh, is a, um, a score based on uh, five elements with a, a, a graded score, and finally the result allow us to define if it's indicated a conservative treatment, a palliative treatment, or an extensional surgery. But it can be very difficult to give a, a precise scoring to the, each patient. So uh, it's not always uh, black or white in this patient, but we are analyzing a radiation of gray. The Tomita score is a little bit more easier. There are only three, three parameters that are analyzed and give a, is very easy and very quick to define. So according to what kind of score you decide, it's very important to use the same score from the different departments, neurosurgical department, oncologists and radiotherapist department, in order to have a common language, also to define the status of the patients. Again, this is the summary of the characteristic of a and question score, but both of them do not analyze the estimation of life expectancy in the biomechanical parameters that are very important uh, consideration that uh, an orthopedic or a neurosurgeon uh, have to take in care, consider what type of treatment uh, the patient need. For this aspect, for the biomechanical aspect, we can use the SIN score that is very precise, is very accurate, but sometimes it's very hard to have all this information, especially in the emergency department, to complete the scoring system. Also because one of the most important questions, the second one, or one of the most important, uh, is uh, that the oncologist, the radiotherapist, and also the patient ask us if it's a lesion, will it break or not? So uh, sometimes it's very hard to uh, give these answer. And uh, we are trying with the, biomechanical study to have some elements that can help also the physician to uh, solve this problem, analyzing the tumor size, the position, the bone quality, and the vertebral level. This is a biomechanical element, but it's a computer um, software, and it's just a prototype. So we hope in the next future um, that we hope in the next future to have uh, um, a software and uh, artificial intelligence that with all these parameters of the patient can be calculated the risk for the fracture. But right now, uh, we don't have an element like this. Also, new scores are advisable, and there is some different scores that analyzes the advantage in target therapy, the new therapies available, the new scores that consider um, the subtotype, the, the histological subtotypes, but uh, right now all this new score needs a validation with prospective studies uh, and uh, are very, very specific uh, for tumor. But uh, in this way, we have a lack of standardization. So it's an open question. There is a lot of shadow in this. Uh, uh, part. So right now, probably the Tokuashi is the best scores that uh, is available, but with many, many drawbacks that we have seen. But once we have defined if the patient needs a surgical treatment, uh, we can use the Boriani flowchart to understand how to manage the different type of surgical um, procedure. Obviously, when we speak about surgery, we have three main goals, to have a pain control, 
to perform the compression of the neurosurgical structure and the stabilization of the spinal column. Especially for these last two topics, the compression is necessary to improve the performance status and the overall survival, while the reconstruction by an anterior, posterior, only posterior element is necessary to provide stabilization and to better control also the pain. But another goal of the surgical treatment that are more often requested to us is to allow to the patient to be candidate for further treatment like the radiotherapy, chemotherapy, immunotherapy. So sometimes it's not really a neurosurgical need, but it's an oncologist need. The, the, the surgery. But when we are speaking about the surgery of the spinal metastasis, we have to uh, make a precision. When we are speaking about the surgical oncology strategy, usually the goal is the resection and embryopolis resection of the lesion, the tumor lesion. But in spinal metastasis, we have to introduce a, a different type of concept because uh, um, usually it's not feasible, it's not a uh, um, recondable uh, um, resection, uh, resection surgery. In fact, in most cases of spinal metastasis, intralesion excision eventually with gross total resection is enough also because often we have radiotherapies and chemotherapy that we help our results. Just in, in specific case, in single case of a radioresistant tumors of a single vertebral metastasis, a uh, huge surgery is indicated and dedicated. The timing of the treatment, the surgical treatment, is very important. It's very important in all the fields, but especially in the spinal metastasis, because um, preserving the, the function. Uh, preserve the quality of the life of the patient. And uh, in these topics, early diagnosis of spinal metastasis can give the opportunity to perform less invasive treatment and uh, to prevent the catastrophic events of a uh, vertebral disruption. In this option, vertebral plastic and eventually radio frequency are a very useful tool, but we need an early diagnosis of the spinal metastasis. Like in this case, it's a woman with a single breast metastasis of L4, and we perform and we manage the radio frequency with the head of the neural navigation. We simulate the area of the radio frequency, and finally we perform the vertebral plastic. Uh, the patients have uh, the control of the disease in uh, 24 months of follow-up. So with a really less invasive uh, treatment, we obtain pain control and uh, the disease control. But usually we are not so lucky and we have to treat patients with disruption. And usually we have patients with many problems, often multi, multiple spinal metastasis, multi-organ dissemination. So, um, our main surgery usually are, is the palliative surgery with the, the compression and eventually fixation. This is a case with a lung cancer, the question of seven. So we are in the gray zone between conservative uh, or palliative surgery. We perform the compression and fixation in uh, that case. Another case is similar. Again, our choice was to perform uh, fixation and decompression. It's very difficult to define if uh, the choice is correct just after we understand it. But we have to keep in mind that with a very easy uh, surgery like the compression and fixation with hook system that provides an easy and very strong fixation, especially in multiple level disease, can be an option. But obviously, the history of the patient tells us if. Uh, our choice was correct or wrong. A trick, selective vertebral plastic, also in the compression patient, can prevent anterior column failure. So in some cases, can be very useful to perform vertebral plastic in adjunction to the uh, posterior fixation. 
obviously in patients with a better condition, the uh, gross total organization for that disease control is advocated. Obviously, as I said, the condition of the patient must, must be better. Like in this case, as a young woman with the breast cancer, Tokuashi of Purti is a very huge uh, intracanal lesion with a spinal cord compression. We perform an anterior approach with a, a two level corpectomy or a construction by anterior, then to posterior to provide stability with a good result. Another case, uh, breast cancer, obviously histology for this kind of uh, uh, surgical treatment is essential, the, defi the definition of uh, uh, histology with the best uh, prognosis. Uh, so this is the final result. And again, a lung casting on uh, of, uh, with uh, a single uh, spinal metastasis. In that case, uh, we perform an uh, and block resection of the lesion by a poor posterior um, approach by a transpeduncular a bilateral approach that allow us to rotate the, um, the, the lesion with a egg-like shield of the lesion and we remove and we reconstruct everything. The patient, I check him after 24 months, I have a a control of the disease and he was operating on for his lung cancer and the disease is controlled. So this is very selective case, really very selective. But in this case, also a huge surgery is indi indicated. A, a pure posterior approach for anterior and posterior reconstruction can be suitable, especially in the thoracolumbar spine, also if it's a demanding approach. Combined approach um, usually is advocated in the cervical spine because allow us to control the pathologies, like in this case with a complete disruption of C3, a posterior, a, a pure posterior approach is not indicated due to the high risk of the hardware failure. So in that case, we perform an anterior corpectomy, then a posterior uh, fixation. Again, another case, but uh, you can see that all the, the majority of these cases are the cervical because it's more easy to approach with a combined approach um, due to the facility of the approach of the cervical uh, case. This is a specific case I, I want to show you. A two-level uh, disease of a lung carcinoma, to quash of 10, uh, we analyze is an uh, osteolytic lesion with the uh, uh, impairment of the vertebral artery that is just uh, just involved but is not closed. So we perform a very accurate study. We perform a two-level corpectomy. This is the reconstruction with the posterior fixation. The result seems good, but after one month, we observe a hard hardware failure by anterior and posterior failure. So we reoperated on the patient after one month, so the patient stopped his program for radiotherapy. We performed this very huge surgery, so we have to keep in mind that also in that case, that seems easy. A complication, a natural complication, may affect also the, uh, the program, the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy uh, program. And uh, a case, the last of this section, of a renal carcinoma, so is a single lesion, is a poor vertebral body lesion. So in this case, the question 14 is indicated a um, in block resection with a transthoracic approach and the posterior fixation. The patient after three years is uh, free from um, his uh, um, primitive uh, uh, problem and uh, is uh, pretty good. He has some trouble with the fixation because this posterior, posterior fixation is too short. Probably right now I will fix it with a two or three level above and a bit of the, the corpectomy. But this is just a consideration about uh, uh, the entity of the fixation. So for the cervical spine management of combined sex is more easy. So uh, we have to keep in mind about this. But also considering all this uh, scoring, this consideration, sometimes our 
indication change during surgery sometimes. This is a case of a prostate carcinoma, Tokoash of 9, indication for a palliative, uh, in the, uh, palliative surgery due to the other lesion. So we start for a posterior fixation and decompression, but during surgery, we discovered that the vertebral body was completely disrupted. So we are obliged to perform a combined approach with an anterior reconstruction, it was not the real indication considered the tokuashi, but during surgery, we cannot make anything different. And this is the final concept. Again, a case of breast cancer, Tokwash of 14, the indication is uh, to perform a, a gross total removal of the lesion, radiotherapy of the vertebral metastasis of L4. But during surgery, we discovered that uh, the intracanal lesion was uh, uh, intradural and was really hard and quite impossible to remove from the nerve root. So, also indication was uh, to perform radiotherapy, um, curative radiotherapy after surgery due to the performance status of the patient and the quantity of lesion that was uh, inside the spinal canal. Uh, the radiotherapist and oncologist change the protocol and do not provide further treatment for that patient, also if the condition was good. So, in conclusion, what, which is the correct treatment option? I think I don't have any answer, also, also because it's quite impossible to give an answer to this question. I just want to focus on about some take home message. It's very important, especially in emergency surgery, to keep all the information about the patient because sometimes a wrong, a wrong indication is worse than the deficit itself, especially if there is a suspect of a primitive spine tumor and non metastatic spine tumor. What is possible is better to have a histological diagnosis, especially if is a first presentation of the disease. And uh, without or with stabilized neurological deficit, really take time to analyze all the aspects. Otherwise, we take a decision with not all the elements and it's very easy to make the wrong choice. It's really, really important to have a multidisciplinary team to discuss the case and also because surgery alone does not play a role in the treatment of the spinal metastasis. Really, we are observing a severe problem, but uh, really is only a part of the problem. The main problem is the primary tumor. And uh, it's very, very important to explain the purpose of the surgery to the patient. There is, in this kind of patient, a very high expectancy from surgery. So is really essential to take time to explain to the patient and to be clear about the role of the surgery. And keep in mind that every case is different. We can try to standardize with the classification, with scoring, um, but we have finally discussed case by case. And again, we have seen a lot of shadow in this presentation, but I want to cite Murakami that he said that, that where there is shadow must be light. Thank you very much for the attention. And this is my email if you need to share your experience or if you have any question. Thank you very much.